Okay, so we received these models in the beginning of the class, so we're going to have to trim it. The first thing we have to make sure is that the base is perpendicular. The first thing we have to do is make sure that the uh, base of the model is parallel with the opposal plane, or as close to it as possible. So, the first uh, thing we're going to trim is the bottom. We have to make sure, just as a review, that when we trim it, we don't hold it like this and use our weight behind it. We have to clamp our fingers behind the machine and press it with our fingers. This way, if we slip, our weight won't press our fingers into the blade. Before we start trimming, we have to wet the model. This way, the, the stone will not stick to the surface and we'll have an easier time uh, rinsing it off. So as we're trimming it, so as we're trimming it, We're going to have to frequently check to see if the base is parallel. Also, we have to consider that the um, curve of speed is going in a downwards fashion. So, we have to be mindful of this last two. And the same thing on the other side. So if we notice, although this looks like it's parallel to the occlusal plane, if we notice the distance between this tooth and the base and this tooth and the base, we can see that there's a difference in um, distance. So we know that this side will have to be trimmed a little shorter. And as we're trimming it, we have to check it and make sure that we don't trim it too short. So that should be okay. Even though it looks a little crooked, it's not because here we will eventually have to build up the teeth. So at that point, they're going to be uh, more perpendicular, I mean more parallel. They're going to be more parallel. So here, we can trim this area down a little bit by carefully tilting the model depending on how much adjustment we have here. If we have more adjustment on this uh, table, then we can just adjust the table down, and that way we don't have to hold the model up to try to trim down the side a little bit. In this case, this is as low as this particular uh, model trimmer goes, so I'm, I'm going to lift this slightly and make a beveled trim right on the edge of the model. We need a bevel trim so that we can actually take this model and put it in a base so we can make a stone base for it and this way the model won't get stuck. We can trim the back and kind of round the edges. Remember, if we don't have too much of a base, 
then we have to trim very gently. So at this point we can stop and check to see if the model is uh, parallel to the occlusal plane by sitting it on a uh, table. After drawing the model, what we need to do is we're going to have to grind the inside of this model so that we can get a nice horseshoe and this way we can allow a proper size of the dies. Also this will give us a parallel wall on the lingual surface so that it will aid us in taking the model out of the base. After drawing the model and making sure that the model is parallel with the table and it's nice and flat, we're going to grind the lingual surface of the model to make it nice and straight and give it an even surface to aid in removing this model from the base. Now we look at it on the top. Everything's nice and smooth on the lingual. We have to make sure that we do not thin out this area too much, since this is where the dowel pins will go, and we need enough of a surface so that when we seat it back in the base, it will be very stable. So let's measure it. So if we use a little ruler, this measures about 12 millimeters. Let's everybody try to stay around 11 to 12. If we go beyond that, it's going to become the surface is going to become very thin and the model will break very easily when we try to remove it from the base. So the next step is going to be marking our dies and where we want our pins to go. Okay, so now that our model is dry and it's all trimmed, it's parallel to the uh, table, the occlusal table is parallel to the base, and as we see we have enough 
meat on this model to make a nice die without it being too long. So the first thing we need to do is compare the occlusal surfaces of the teeth and the relationship to the base here. So our aim is to have the pins in the center of this surface. That is if we're using single pins. You know, with a single hole. Uh, the single pin dowel pins have two pins coming off of it. So one hole is going to correspond with two pins. It's going to be a shorter lingual pin and a longer uh, buckle pin or facial. Uh, if we're using the whale dent pindex, then it's going to consist of two pins, which will be a longer facial pin and a shorter lingual pin. The longer facial pin will require that we will go facially to this middle line. So we would put one here, which would be the long pin, and one here, which would be the short pin. And this should go be exactly in the middle between this line and each of these borders. In our case, we're going to use dual pins with one single hole. So we're going to line that up in the middle here. Uh, another thing we have to make sure is that we know exactly where this surface is to the relation of the teeth. Because let's say if we take a drill bit and drill straight down on here, drill straight down on here in the middle of the tooth, guess where this is going to come out? If we mark this here, and we look at it from the side and we put it put a hole right in there you see where that pin is going to go through? it's going to go through right about right about there and that's not where we want that pin to be we need that pin here. So if we look at that pin there and we know that that border is in here somewhere, you see, and you turn this, you see how far this is from the incisal edge? So that border will actually be somewhere around here. So what we need to do is we need to go back more. So if we want to go to the center here, then we're going to have to drill somewhere about here. So it all has to do with being able to approximate the difference between this tooth, this incisal edge, and the border of the bottom. So, if we look at it from this perspective, and we know that the end of this surface here is about here, then we know that the midpoint of the two surfaces will be this and this, so the middle between the two would be about here. So we would mark it, mark it right there. So we know that this is where we need to drill. So we will do everything up to about the canines. 
because if we notice it here the surface is lingual to the incisal edges of the anteriors so now if we go back further and we kind of look at it from the front we see that the border of the surface pretty much lines up with the tissue level here and the border of the lingual surface here we can clearly see where that is so when we look at it from the top we know that we're, if we choose to go to a point between this surface here and this surface there then we'll be in the right place so we can put the pin pretty much dead center of this die and we'll be pretty good now the next one is we're gonna go here so we know that we're going to cut right about this area here and then if we consider these four points here where we're gonna cut we can put a dot right in the center between those four points and we can also do the same obviously here too it's just such a large tooth it's very easy to approximate the center of this die so now we're gonna do the same we're gonna need to pin every single section because they're gonna, they're gonna have to be removable so we're gonna put one dual pin here one dual pin remember this is starting to go lingual now so we're gonna have to put it right about here and then a little bit more lingual right about here and then this one right about there so that pretty much lines up with these now this section we're not going to cut so all we're gonna need is maybe we can put three pins there so we can put one here and then since this is turning we can put one to about the lingual cusp of the first premolar and then here just about the center of this tooth but let's go all the way to the back tooth and kind of center it right about there maybe the mesiolingual cusp and we're going to drill a hole there so hopefully these holes will uh, line up with this center line here to double check and make sure that we're lined up you can aim the drill the little laser right on right on this mark but do not push the do not drill the hole all the way just kind of touch the drill bit to the bottom surface of this model and then turn it back and double check to see how close you're on the line if you're close to the line it's okay if you are like way off the line then do not drill that hole then you're gonna go back here and uh, reposition your dot and then realign the laser slightly push it down touch the drill bit to the stone and check again see if you're in a better position So let's try that. Okay, here are our dial pins. These are the dual pins. Has one short lingual and one long on the buckle. And they come with these little sleeves right here. And these should fit very easily onto those pins. 
Now not all pins have this, but this one in particular has a little tab on it which keeps it from rotating. So if we don't cut into the model, then this pin will not seat all the way down. I don't know if it can be seen on this, but this pin is not all the way down. It's like a half a millimeter off the model. So what we need to do is we need to take our separating disc and put little slices into the surface on the buckle. So let's do that now. So we're going to cut these little slits right now in the model. If we cut it into the lingual as well, it doesn't really matter. So we're going to use a little diamond disc and the suction here. And we can just do a little cut just like that. Now not all pins have this, so not all pins require it. So whichever way we want to turn these pins, that's where the slots need to be. And the slots are generally determine the direction of the pins. And whichever way our saw cuts will be, will de also determine the direction of these pins. So as we can see here, the direction of the pins are going to align with the cuts of our saw. So, If we turn this around, we notice these little lines that we made. This is pretty much how our saw blades will be cutting these dies. So we kind of follow them down. These lines should be parallel so that the dies will be removable. straight down exactly in between the teeth so if we did everything right these lines should be pointing exactly in between the holes that we made. So let's see. So this line goes through here, this one goes through here, this one goes through there, this one through here, this one through there, one through there, and through here. So as we can see, these lines go right in between these holes. So if we go down on the lingual, we should end up with the same result. So remember, lines parallel, lines in between the teeth.
Some of them on the lingual may end up very close together. And that's because everything is kind of turned inwards. And since an inside of the, the curve is shorter, the lines end up closer together. So now let's see the lingual lines. So this one goes here. This one goes there. This one there. 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 Now this one we have to be extremely careful with because this ends up very close to the other line, to the other, to, to this pin here, right here. And then we have this one, this one's good. So this one here is going to go extremely close to this pin, so what we can do is we can move this line over slightly. You see how this one is not exactly in the middle between the two? Now we can take this and we can move this a little bit over. If you have to use a different color pencil so you know which one to use. And we should be good now. So what we'll do is we can connect these lines this way we know exactly where to go. Okay, so now we have our places where we're going to cut, we have our holes, and then we're going to clean out these holes with some compressed air or steam it out, and then we're going to place the dowel pins. Okay, now we have our little slits cut, so if we notice, and we put this pin in, now we can see that the dowel pin is all the way down, and this dowel pin, it doesn't rotate very easily now, because you have that little slit, and the little tab is inside the slit. Now again, this is not on every dowel pin. It depends on the company that makes it. So now we can put the sleeve on it and that should go almost all the way down to the model surface. So what we can do is we can just take each pin and put the sleeves on it. Now what we can do is we can take each pin and uh, make sure that it fits into the holes. So we can take the pins. Don't put the sleeves on it just yet. The sleeves go on it after everything. Is uh, fit and glued down. If you glue this down with the pin on the uh, with the sleeve on the dowel pin then sometimes by capillary action the glue will get sucked into the sleeve and it will permanently glue the sleeve onto these pins.
And if that happens, your model's ruined because uh, it's going to get stuck into the base and they're not going to be able to remove it in one piece. So we go one by one. You see how each pin is turned slightly in because it is determined by the way we're going to cut the dies. So if the pin is turned to the side and we try to cut the die, what's going to happen? We're going to cut into that lingual pin because it's not turned in the right direction. So these little lines actually tell you where your cut is going to be. So this way you can actually turn your dowel pins exactly where you won't be cutting. So remember each pin needs to be fit. Make sure it go, you, every pin is down and your holes are deep enough for the pin to be down. Okay, so this is what the model should look like. Then we take, make sure you have enough sleeves so that um, you have a complete model set. So 10 pins, 10 sleeves. And after this, we're just going to glue the pins in, put the sleeves on, and the next step will be pouring the base.